Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's presentation, we are going to take a look again at another MFRS, which is an important MFRS, MFRS 110, which deals with um, the uh, events after reporting period. And for information, MFRS 110 is equivalent to IES 10 events after reporting period as issued and amended by the IESP. Let's look at the learning outcome. At the end of this topic, the students should be able to define events after reporting period, what are events after reporting period, and also to distinguish between the adjusting event, which is one of the events after reporting period, and the non-adjusting events after reporting period. Then your sh uh, the um, lecture should also be able to guide you on how to discuss and show the accounting treatment of events after reporting periods. And then uh, also to be able to state the disclosure requirement of MFRS 110 on events after reporting period, particularly the guideline on how to provide disclosure notes to the financial statement. The objectives of MFRS 110 is actually to prescribe when an entity, referring to the reporting entity, should adjust the financial statement if there are events after reporting period, and what are the disclosure that the entity should give about the date when the financial statement were authorized for issue. So we're going to look at what is actually the date where the financial statement were authorized for issue and also to give disclosure about events after reporting period. This standard also requires the entity that should not, uh, entity shall not prepare the financial statement on a going concern if after the reporting period, an event indicate that the going concern assumption is no longer appropriate. So if there is an evidence or events that uh, has brought the uh, material impact to the company and that would also give the uh, company not to prepare the financial statement on a going concern basis. So what are events after reporting period? In terms of the definition that is given in paragraph 3, these are referring to those events either favourable or unfavorable, favorable to the company or maybe unfavorable uh, to the company uh, that occur between the end of the reporting period. So let's say the end of the reporting period is the year end of the company. Let's say 31st of December 2022 and the date when the financial statements are authorized for issue. So whatever events between these two dates the year end and the date the financial statements are authorized for issue which is typically by the board of directors these are what you call events after reporting period and the events after reporting period will only include all events up to the date when the financial statements authorized for issue only whatever events after the um, financial statement has been authorized for issue is not covered in this standard. So what is actually authorized for issue? The terms authorization of the financial statement refers to the process involved in authorizing the financial statement for issue, for issue to the shareholders or to the governing board. That will vary depending upon the management structure, statutory requirements and also the procedures that are followed in preparing and finalizing the financial statement and that is normally depending on any, any country's jurisdiction as well, whatever regulatory requirements as well. So what is actually authorization date? So it is actually the date on which the board of directors or the governing body of the company, the reporting entity, uh, have reviewed and uh, the financial statement and formally authorized for issue. So the date that the board of directors authorized the financial statement for issue to the outside entity, let's say to the shareholders or to the supervisory board and other interested parties for their approval, 
the date that were authorized for issue, the board of directors authorized for issue, that is authorization date. So uh, these are some other important notes that you need to uh, also ensure you take into uh, precaution. This is not referring to the date when the shareholders approve the financial statements. The authorization date does not mean the same date where the shareholders approve the financial statement. So that is according to paragraph MFRS 110, paragraph 4 regarding authorization date. And FRS 110 requires an entity to disclose the authorization date. When is the authorization date and who gave that authorization? Uh, that normally refers to the board of directors. And evidence of the board of directors that authorize the financial statement is normally um, through them being uh, signing the appropriate approval documents, let's say such as the director's report. And any events which occur after the date the financial statement authorized for issue is not covered within this standard, the scope of MFRS 110. And it is important for the users to know when is the financial statement authorized for issue because the financial statement after the date of uh, the financial statement being authorized for issue that will not be reflected under MFRS 110. So what is events after reporting period? We have already defined, but, but now we're going to show this in a diagram or in a timeline. Let's say this is the, the start of the year, year start, which is 1st of January, year 4. We, and, and you can see that the year end here is the reporting date, which is 31st of December, year 4. So that is the year end. And uh, the reporting period is in between the year start and the year end or between the beginning of the year and the reporting date. So the period where the financial statement are normally being prepared is the reporting period or that is also known as financial year or the time period that are being covered by the entity's financial statement. That is reporting period. And... However, the financial statement will not be ready immediately on the reporting date. So let's say reporting date is the 31st of December. It will be not ready on that date yet. And normally, they will take some uh, period, some few months to have them being completed or being ready. And that will start with the draft financial statement being prepared during the post-reporting period. And uh, let's say on the uh, somewhere... 15th of March, year 5, the directors authorized the financial statement for issue. Therefore, the events that took place between the reporting date and the authorization date, which is between 31st of uh, December, year 4, until 15th of March, year 5, these events are actually happening during post-reporting period, and these are referring to events after reporting period. Even if the financial statement are being made available and approved by shareholders on 31st of March, year 4, the most important thing is when is the authorization date of the financial statement. So what is the accounting issue here? The accounting issue is in deciding whether a subsequent event after reporting period does it require an adjustment to the financial statement, meaning that whatever amount recognized needs to be adjusted, maybe in the expenses, in the liabilities, in the income, or in the assets of the company needs to be adjusted, or just providing a disclosure note. So this will depend on the types of the event. But before that, let us look at first illustration on this, which is, uh, to illustrate the few dates that I just mentioned. So management of the entity completes draft financial statement for the year ended 31st of December 2000X1 on 28th of February. So the draft was completed on 28th of February. And on 18th March, the board of directors reviewed the financial statement and authorized for issue. So it was authorized for issue on 18th of March. So this is an important date. And the entity announces its profit and selected other financial information on 19th of March, one day later. Financial statements are made available to the shareholders 
on 1st of April, this is not the date of authorization, the shareholders approve the financial statement in, in the annual meeting on 15th of May and the approved financial statement are then filed with the relevant regulatory body on 17th of May. So let us look at some dates that you need to identify. The first one is identify the authorization date. So when is the authorization date? The authorization date is on the line B here, which is 18 of March. The reporting date refers to this one, 31st of December, which is the end of the reporting period. And the time frame for event after the reporting period or the so-called post-reporting period, the time frame is between 31st of December 2001 and 18 of March, which is the date the financial statements were authorized for issue. So let's look at the types of events now. The first one is the adjusting event. And what is adjusting event after reporting period? There are two types of event and, uh, that is discussed under this standard. The adjusting events refers to those events that provides evidence of the condition that existed as at the end of the reporting period. So condition already existed, but the event that took place during the post-reporting period provide evidence, further evidence of that particular condition or confirm uh, the uh, condition that existed as at the reporting period. The second one is the non-adjusting events after reporting period. So the definition uh, according to MFRS 110 paragraph 3 is that those that are indicative indicative uh, of conditions that arose after the reporting period. It does not provide evidence, but they are just an indicate, uh, indicative of condition that arose subsequent to the reporting period. So let's look at what are the example of adjusting events after reporting period. These are taken from the textbook as well as from the MFRS 110 paragraph 9 and the lease are not exhaustive. The first one is, this, uh, for example, the settlement of a court case that confirms the entity had a present obligation. The uh, lawsuit has been already put against the company and now is the settlement of the court case that uh, what is the amount to be settled, for example, that confirms or provides evidence on the present obligation that the company has uh, to the uh, whoever third parties, so settlement of the court case. That is the events that provide further evidence. Second one is the bankruptcy of a customer. So the customer normally, if you have a trade receivable, you have already provided allowance for trade receivables in terms of the impairment. So the loss uh, somehow actually existed as the, at the end of the reporting period through the estimated credit loss. So the bankruptcy of the customer is an adjusting event because it confirms that a loss existed as at the reporting period on a trade receivable. And therefore, the company will need to adjust the carrying amount of trade receivable with the uh, so-called impairment loss. Next is also the example under the MFRS 110, the sale of inventories after reporting period that may give evidence about the net realizable value. Let's say net realizable value at the end of the reporting period is uh, a different amount and you have another amount to confirm on the uh, net realizable value at the end of the reporting period. So this will be illustrated in our example that, is, uh, that will proceed later. Uh, you also have other things that are mentioned here, Determin determination of the cost of asset purchase or from the proceed from asset sold before the end of the reporting period. So that is also an example of adjusting event given under MFRS 110 paragraph 9. The adequacy of provision for warranty costs, claims or other accrued expenses or maybe the uh, events that uh, involve impairment of carrying amount of long-term asset such as PPE and intangible asset. Those are examples of adjusting event. You need to provide adjustment to the um, uh, asset that were being impaired. So that is an adjusting event because the word there is adjusting. Adjusting refers to making adjustment. The next one is the determination of after reporting period of the amount of profit sharing 
or bonus payment. So after a reporting date, bonus are being declared so that it is normally being adjusted to the financial statement as long as that happens before the authorization date. Also, the important things here, if you discover fraud or errors, which is in line with MFRS 108, which shows that your financial statement are incorrect. So this needs adjustment to be done because this are an adju uh, adjustment that is very material since it has significant impact to the accuracy and uh, the reliability of the financial statement to be correct. And you need to do the correction. So these are some examples of non-adjusting event. Non-adjusting event will generally just result in disclosure. The word non here means it will not affect the financial statement. Non-adjusting, it refers to the situation where you don't have to adjust the profit or loss, the statement of financial position or perhaps the statement of changes in equity uh, due to this event. Let's say this as uh, let, this is given an MFRS 110 paragraph 11, significant decline in the fair value of investment that occurs between the end of the reporting period and also the date the financial statement are authorized for issue. This will normally require disclosure. So you need to provide disclosure note for not adjusting event. We'll look into recognition and measurement and accounting treatment after a short while. A merger exercise, let's say major business combination after reporting period, Acquisition of subsidiary, acquisition of joint venture, those are all non-adjusting events. You need to provide that in the disclosure notes. Disposal of significant investment that you have already um, uh, made after reporting period of your subsidiary, joint venture or associate. Any announcement of a plan to discontinue an operation or a division or any other things that relates to the um maybe segment of the company, right? Major purchases of non-current assets such as property um, or any significant long-term asset. The list goes on and according to MFRS 110 paragraph 22, this non-adjusting event would uh, result in a disclosure. It happens after the reporting date, between the reporting date but before the authorization date, let's say there was a destruction of a major production by fire or just any natural disaster. It does not need to be fire. This was just example under MFRS 110. It can be other uh, natural disaster that is not within the control of the entity. That happens after reporting period, but before the date the financial statements are authorized for issue. Maybe announcement of uh, commencement of any uh, major restructuring, major orange shares transaction, potential orange shares transaction after reporting period. This requires disclosure. No adjustment is needed. Changes in the tax rate or tax law enacted or announced after reporting period that may have significant impact or effect on the current and deferred tax asset and liabilities of the company. Deferred tax asset and liabilities are discussed under MFRS 112. And then uh, the uh, also entering into significant capital commitments or cap contingent liabilities. Uh, that is also non-adjusting event. If let's say you have a plan to buy a capital asset or Let's say you involve in a MFRS 137 scenario where you have a contingent liabilities that also requires disclosure. Or maybe a, comm a commencing major litigation arising solely out of events that occurred after reporting period. So the um, events occurred after reporting period and therefore that commence major litigation. So that is an the list that were given under MFRS 110 paragraph 22, but as I mentioned, the lists are not exhaustive. So what is actually the accounting treatment for these two events, non-adjusting and adjusting events? So we start off with adjusting events. Under MFRS 110 paragraph 8, uh, the, it prescribed that entity shall adjust. Adjustment must be made to the amount that has been recognized in the financial statement to reflect this adjusting events and also uh, where necessary you need to go and update the re relevant disclosure but most importantly is that the financial statement must be adjusted to reflect the amount recognized under paragraph 8 of the standard and uh, when we need to go and reflect the amount adjusting events the you need to go and recognize elements uh, such as asset and liabilities that maybe previously were not 
being recognized. So let's go to the next one. So um, just now for the adjusting event, you need to go and adjust the financial statement because the word is adjusting. So the next one it refers to accounting treatment is uh, that is relating to non-adjusting event. The word non-adjusting event here that refers to the situation where prescribed by the MFRS 110 that entity shall not adjust the amount recognized in the financial statement. So financial statement shall not be adjusted. No accounting treatment is needed. So no adjustment or no adjusting journal entries are needed according to MFRS 110 paragraph 10. All right. So the, but before this, we were talking about paragraph 8. Now we are talking about paragraph 10 of the MFRS. Right. And the entity shall, however, provide disclosure notes to the financial statement uh, the following for each material category. So let's say if the I, uh, the events are material, uh, the uh, MFRS 110 paragraph 21 prescribed that disclosure notes must be provided. Material means it has significant impact to the company, significant impact to the uh, financial statement. So what should shall be disclosed is shall, you should uh, disclose the nature of the event that had taken place, the non-adjusting event, and also an estimates of the financial effect if that is in available, or if the, uh, the estimates are not available, the laws are not available, not yet finalized, for example, a statement that such as estimate cannot be made or have not yet been made must also be uh, provided in the disclosure notes to the financial statement. Uh, I have two special mentions from the MFRS 110 regarding uh, the events uh, after reporting period. Number one is on dividends and number two is on going concern. So dividends, they are prescribed under MFRS 110, paragraph 12 and 13, going concern under paragraph 14 and 15. So let's take a look on that. For dividends, MFRS 110, paragraph 12 and 13, prescribe that dividends to the shareholders of equity instrument, which are actually proposed or declared after reporting period, but before the financial statement authorized for issue, shall not be recognized as a liability. So meaning that no adjustment should be made in the financial statement if the dividends are declared after the reporting period, but before the date the financial statement is authorized for issue. So therefore, this is just what you can conclude is it is an adjust non-adjusting event. So you always treat this as non-adjusting event if that was prepared after reporting period, but before the date the financial statement authorized for issue. What is the rationale? The, it is because the obligation to pay dividends only arise after dividends are declared. And therefore, um, entity does not have obligation as at the reporting date. And that does not meet the criteria of a present obligation as per MFRS 137 provision, contingent liabilities and contingent asset. So if the, it does not meet the criteria of a present obligation, which is the definition of a liability present obligation as a result of past event. So therefore, uh, it shall not be adjusted, but shall just be disclosed in the notes to the financial statement. And it is a non-adjusting event. However, liability should only be recognized in entity's financial statement if the dividends are proposed or declared before the end of the reporting period. Let's say the year end 31st of December and you declare somewhere 25th of December and it is still unpaid by the end of the reporting period. So this one will need uh, adjustment because it was recognized and also uh, being announced before the, the end of the reporting date. So this requires adjustment to the financial statement number three if that was before the end of the reporting period, the declaration made of for the dividends. Uh, let's look at illustration two for dividends. Um, 4th July, Nini Berhad declared a final on the dividends for the reporting period ended 30th June 2003. So it was declared after the reporting date. Remember, this is an adjusting event or a non-adjusting event. This is a non-adjusting event because uh, it was declared on 4th of July after the end of the reporting date. Directors authorized financial statement for issue on 1st of September. 
So the question with reference to MFRS 110, events after reporting period, you are to explain the type of event, either adjusting or not adjusting, and to describe the appropriate accounting treatment to reflect the above event. So for this one, this is a non-adjusting event. Why I mentioned earlier obligation to pay dividend only arise after dividends are declared. And here, uh, in accordance with MFR 110, dividends are declared after the reporting period. And therefore, it was declared on 4th of July after 30th of June. The entity does not have any obligation as at the reporting date. And the liability should only be recognized if dividends are prepared or proposed, bef uh, proposed or declared before the end of the reporting period and are still unpaid. So Nini shall not recognize those dividends as a liability. So what shall Nini do if uh, the company do not adjust the financial statement? So the, no adjustment is to be made. No amount shall be recognized as a liability in respect of the dividend. However, you need to provide, the company need to provide disclosure in the notes to the financial statement about the event. So these are the sample disclosure that you can provide for the dividends that were declared after reporting date. Next, we go to going concern. Uh, the MFRS 110 paragraph 14 and 15, entity shall not prepare its financial statement on a going concern basis if the management determines after the reporting period, either it intends to liquidate. So let's say there is an intention to liquidate after the reporting period or the intention to cease operation, cease trading completely. So that is uh, having also no realistic alternative other than uh, going for liquidation or seize the operation so if that is the case the financial statement shall not be prepared on a going concern basis and if the if this is the case um yeah the the company needs to consider whether the going concern assumption is still appropriate and the standard requires uh, a fundamental change in the basis of accounting so um MFRS 101 specify required disclosure if the financial statement are not prepared on a going concern basis. So you need to provide disclosure. And also, management should be aware of the material uncertainties relating to the event. Material uncertainties here relating to the event that may cast significant doubt upon the entity's ability to continue as going concern. So, therefore, company will need to consider that and require the company to disclose those uh, events that may arise after reporting period. I have some highlight here where the uh, some examples to relate to this is the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic that might qualify for such an event that the company may no longer uh, prepare the financial statement as a going concern if uh, the effect uh, of the COVID-19 has somehow affected the company to to force to be liquidated. So uh, an entity may include a paragraph about how, uh, let's say, the COVID-19 pandemic affect the entity's liquidity position and that forced the entity to be liquidated. Illustration 3 is ongoing concern. Report the entity go for is the... Uh, in the course of financing its financial statement for the year ended 30th June. So due to the adverse global impact of COVID-19 pandemic, the company has lost major customers. So all major customers has no longer purchased from the company. The company now intends to cease its business and liquidate the company. So if this is the case, discuss the effect of the above financial statement above on the financial statement of the reporting entity in accordance with MFRS 110 after the reporting period. So in accordance with paragraph 14, just now we mentioned paragraph 14, the company should not prepare the financial statement as a going concern and company needs to disclose the fact that the financial statement have not been prepared on a going concern basis. Okay, that's it for this presentation. I will continue with the next presentation in my next video. But before this, uh, before we end, these are the disclosure or the rules on disclosure for the MFRS 110 that you need to observe before uh, you uh, um, actually apply the standard uh, to the company. So these are the important things that need to be highlighted under the disclosure requirement of the company. This date of approval for issue, updating the disclosure about condition at the end of the reporting period, 
and non-adjusting events after reporting period if there are disclosure that need to be made for material category. So that was under paragraph 17 to 21. I'll see you when I will see you. I'll see you in the next video for more example. Till then, I'll see you when I will see you. Assalamualaikum and have a pleasant day ahead. Bye.